Hello everyone and welcome to an introduction to World Creator 2. I'm Tyler and in this video we are going to begin the creation of our terrain by breaking down how we can shape it to our liking and go through the settings in order to achieve that. Before we begin, I find one of the best design plans to have is to go in with some sort of precedent of a real world landscape. Using references from different landscapes to get a mental idea of the design or biomes you are going after is a great way to help establish a goal. So here I have a design board that I've made to help guide some of the features in the process of my terrain. For this series, we're going to design a four biome landscape so we can showcase as much of World Creator 2 as possible. Those regions include things like a mountain region, a hillside region, a tropical region, and a desert region. So when starting a new project in Royal Creator 2, almost one of the first things that I do is change the way that our soil looks. And by that, I mean this soil here on the side that you see. This is just a gradient to basically help showcase the heights of our terrain. But for me, I like this to be as thin as possible so that graphically on the side, I can see how high my terrain is. And by that, let's go and up here to the top right under the general section here. And you can see at the very top, we have the soil properties. You can turn it on or off, or you can select the customized drop box here and you can specify whatever gradient you want. But in my case, what I'm wanting to do is change this depth value here. So I'm gonna select this, the default is 50, and I'm gonna drop it as low as I possibly can. And that's basically 0.01. And doing this basically is just going to help me see the true heights of my terrain from the min and max heights. Also, while we're in this menu, you can see at the very bottom, there's a grid properties. Let's go ahead and check this. And we're gonna to touch on this a little bit later on when I showcase some other feature, but what you can do is you can basically change this grid to however you want. You can change the line distancing between the lines. So right now the default is every 100 meters, but let's say I wanna change it to every 512 meters. And there you go, it has split up the terrain in these 512 meter chunks while having these sub lines in between. You can change that line count by sliding the thin line count. So we can increase it to have more of a grid or we can decrease it to have less of a grid. It's completely up to you. This is just a graphical representation to basically help you design if you want to understand some of the patterns of your terrain. Again, we'll use this grid to showcase you something in just a little bit. So we're back here in the base surface tab, as you can see on the right, and let's go ahead and start figuring out the, and defining the overall size of our terrain. But first, right here in the very top of this properties panel, you have the basic generator properties. And this is started off by a seed value. The default seed value is zero, which is what the terrain that's generated in front of you looks like, but you can basically change this to an infinite number of values. So this is just a random seed that if we increase, you can see it's going from one, two, three, and four. The more we increase this, we're basically plugging in a different integer value into the equation that's generating this terrain. Or if we're crazy, we can just select the random seed and find something completely random until we basically until we find something that we like. But I'm just going to set this back to zero so that we can see the default terrain that you all will be used to. Next down the list, we have the terrain size, and you can basically set this to any size that you want. You have a few little quick options down here. So if we click on 1024, it'll drop down our terrain size to a 1024 meter terrain size. Or we can go up and up even higher and higher, all the way up to a 16K terrain. But don't let that fool you, you can make this size anything that you want. And it doesn't even have to be a square. This little size lock, if we uncheck this, and let's go ahead and select 2048 again. We press F, remember, to go back to our viewport screen here. And say we want this terrain to be wider than it is long. So we can change the terrain width here. Let's change it to something like 5555 and zoom back out and now we have a terrain that's 2048 by 5555. You can make this any size that you want. There are no limitations. But for the purposes of this tutorial series, let's go ahead and check the 4096 by 4096 tab here because this is the terrain size that we're primarily going to be working out here. And I would like to note that these are just some basic terrain sizes, but depending on what engine you might be pushing this to, will depend on the terrain size that you need to specify. For example, there are different requirements between opening up this terrain in Unity as there are in opening up this terrain in Unreal Engine 4. 
We'll cover those differences later on, but I'm going to link in the description a more in-depth video that I have already done that breaks down Unity and Unreal Engine 4's landscape requirement sizes going into this before you decide to go into it. You don't have to, but it's a good rule of thumb to keep in mind before you start. The next important piece of information on our list here is the precision. Now the precision level is what defines the resolution of our terrain's detail. Now don't get this confused with our terrain size. So the first thing that we established was the terrain size category here. That's the physical size of our terrain. But the precision level resolution here, you see it still says 4096. That is the actual resolution of the height map that would be generated from this physical terrain. So the default number is one meter, which basically means that for every one meter square block on this terrain represents one pixel. If we were to select this, we can see a list of other adjustments that we can go by. If we select two meters here, for example, you see that the resolution of the terrain is dropped down to 2048 by 2048, but the physical size of the terrain is still 4096 by 4096. And again, the two meters here means every two meters will represent a single pixel within this 2048 by 2048 resolution. Make sense? Same thing goes if we were to select this list again, and let's go to something that's a little bit higher resolution, which means we need a precision level of something that's below one. So if we select half meter here, then our physical terrain size is still 4K, but our resolution of the terrain is now at 8K. This becomes really important because it really establishes the amount of detail that is physically displayed on your terrain. Let's zoom into our terrain a little bit further to really break this down. And then what I'm going to do is on the left toolbar, there's an icon here that looks like a spider web. That's going to be the wireframe mode. So if we select this, we can basically zoom in and see the wireframe mesh of our terrain. Right now, this mesh is based off of an 8K resolution as we've established. So let's go ahead and select this and let's drop it down to two meters. You see instantly the mesh of the terrain gets much larger because its accuracy is becoming at a wider pixel ratio. Let's go ahead and select this again and let's go to something like 32 meters. Wow, here, so you can now see that the terrain has really gotten way more jagged, and that's because every 32 meters, it's representing a one pixel on this 128 by 128 resolution of the terrain. If we were to untoggle the wireframe mode, you can really see how this is affecting the terrain. It's not that pretty, so you want to make sure that your precision level really matches the goal of what you're after. For this tutorial, we're really just going to keep it at one meter because one meter is a really good representation of what we're going to be doing in this series. So next on the list, we have this seamless properties option here, and this is basically going to let our terrain be seamless in whatever direction we want. If we just check both X and Y, that means you can see the terrain has now adjusted its edges to match the other side of the terrain. So if we wanted to tile this terrain in any engine and make it infinite like in a planet, we could. We can also adjust the way that this blend fall off is. So if we wanted the blend that is really hard to see right here in the middle to be closer to the edge, we just drop this slider to the right and you can sort of see it getting closer to the edge. Coincidentally, if we want it to be really smooth, we can just drag this all the way to left here and it's blending really nicely throughout the terrain. Another form of adjustment is the symmetry. If we select this, we basically just mirrored the terrain here from left to right. You can also adjust the location of where this mirror takes place. Right now it's at zero degrees, but if we went to 45, 90, you can see that the mirroring effect is now changing based on the angle that we've established here. You can even adjust how strong it's being mirrored. So if you only want just a little bit of it mirrored, you can drop this strength value here down a little bit and it's not mirroring as much, but still mirroring it to an effect. Or you can also adjust the smoothness. Now the smoothness is going to affect the actual crease of the mirror. So if we slide this up, you can see that the smoothness here is widening. Or if we were to drop it even more sharp, you can see that there is a really definite line here. The next section to know is the fractal noise properties. So the fractal noise properties section, as well as the noise level strength sliders down here, are the main areas that we can direct the generated detail you see on the terrain. 
The first setting here lets us decide the height range at which the generator is to basically generate the procedural detail on our landscape. This does not mean it's our lowest and highest points on the terrain. The lowest and highest points on the terrain will occur in the observer tools here. So you can see the lowest point on our terrain is around 37 meters and the highest point is about 427. The noise height range here basically just establishes the lower bounding and the higher bounding values of that range. So if we were to basically take the higher value here and decrease it, you can see that the terrain itself is getting lower and lower. So all of our detail is still there, it's just adjusting the overall height of the detail globally. And if we wanted to increase this generated detail, we can either take the slider edge and increase that to the right, or we can increase it by selecting a number value manually. I'm just gonna type in a one here for 5100 and you can really see that this detail has really been extruded. That's a little too much, so we'll just um, reset this back to our default. And then there are two other sliders here, the general strength slider and the factor slider that helps guide this detail a bit further. You can look at the general strength slider here as basically the bulk of the detail. So if we were to decrease this to something like 50, which really smooths out our terrain a bit further. And if we were to increase the factor, you can see that detail is coming back ever so slightly, but at a really more fine rate. So you can look at the general strength as the macro or bulk level of detail adjustment, and the factor is the more fine grained detail adjustments. Do keep in mind that this fractal noise property panel here is the global settings for all of your details. So if you want to establish those details on your own later on, you can, or you can adjust those manually on your own here. It's completely up to you. We're just gonna set this back to default and run with what we have thus far. Additionally, we can select this edit curve checkbox here, and it's gonna bring up a panel where we can edit the curve. And the curve is basically just an adjustment of the height values in a different way. So this graph is pretty much representing a smooth line of what the generated height values are in the program. And you can edit those here if you want by selecting or cutting away however you want. You can change the size of your selection grid. And you can see as I am adjusting these that the terrain itself is adjusting. This is a, just another way you can adjust the terrain to really fine tune it for your likings. We're not gonna mess with this much because we're gonna show you a little trick later on that you can use the curve filter for. So for now, we can just select reset and it'll go back to the original values. And we're gonna uncheck the edit curve because we don't need the edit curve. We're gonna skip the edit offsets for now and let's jump down to the fractal level strength sliders here. So this section will be a repeating type of area that you will see in other sections of the program. This area of adjustments is extremely straightforward, but may be intimidating at first glance. The way it works is that each one of these level step values here represents a different level of detail in terms of the resolution on the terrain. Let's take our terrain back to 2048 by 2048 to further explain this. So as I said, each one of these steps represents a different resolution of detail that's being displayed on the terrain. For example, if we were to increase the level step number three up a little bit, you can see that the terrain is increasing its height in a rather bulky way, or if I decrease it, it's not appearing at all. Or if I decide to increase step seven, you see the little fine grains here, let's zoom in. Let's go ahead and increase seven again. You can see now that the detail for just this slider is affecting the terrain in a much smaller way. Let's drop this back to around where it was. And now let's increase the step number nine. And that detail of adjustment is even tinier. Let's go ahead and reset our defaults. And if we zoom in and decide to change the step number 10, that detail of adjustment is even more fine tuned. So each one of these adjustments is going to change the terrain based on the resolution that they're affecting. So how do you know which one of these steps is affecting what resolution? So for the average user, it's really not important to know which step number is affecting what resolution. 
you just adjust the sliders and the detail changes and you're able to dynamically see it with your own eyes. But for those who really want to know, this is how it works. I'm going to just reset my defaults here. Press F to go back to our main terrain. And now let's go back up to general and I'm going to turn on the grid to help further explain this. So we have this four by four grid displaying on our terrain here. And this four by four grid represents the level of detail of adjustment on the first step slider. Now don't get confused that the first level step here is going to adjust a four by four grid throughout all of your terrain. What it's really doing is it's adjusting a single 512 by 512 resolution of one of these tiles in this specific terrain size of 2048 by 2048. A 4x4 four four grid that's displaying on our terrain is broken down into 512 by 512 meter sections. So here each one of these squares represents 512 by 512 meters. To help out a little bit further, let's increase our terrain size back to 4K. So here you can see that the grid is now an 8x8 eight eight grid, but each one of the tiles still represents a 512 by 512 meter block. So level step one is going to adjust each and every one of these 512 by 512 blocks together. So in this view, I have doubled our grid. So that means that each block here represents 256 by 256 meters. This level of adjustment is based off level step two. So with that understanding, that means that each level increase is essentially doubling the amount of detail that's displaying on the terrain. And if you're wondering, level step 10 adjusts every one meter block on the terrain. Now, does that sound quite familiar to something that we talked about earlier on? Let's go on up here and look at the precision level. So we've established that the precision level is one meters. And level step 10 down here is adjusting detail for every one meter block of resolution on the terrain. Those two correlate with each other, and that is how you can increase or decrease the number of levels you can adjust. Let's go ahead and select our precision level here, and let's drop it down to two you can see now that level step 10 has been removed and the highest one is number nine. Level step nine represents every two meters of adjustment, just like the two meters on our precision level. Let's go ahead and drop it to the lowest one, which is 512 meters. And you can see now the only level step that is remaining is level step one because it is adjusting the terrain for every 512 by 512 block. This is starting to make sense now, I hope a little bit. And to increase detail, remember the default was one. So if we say go up to a quarter meter of precision, that's going to add two more levels of detail on top of the default level 10. Level 11 will control every half meter of detail and level 12 will control every quarter meter of detail, just like we've established here in our precision level. So those two go hand in hand, and that's a great way to help remind you what amount of detail that each one of these steps are controlling. If you want to really see that, just play with each of the precision levels, and you can see what max level of detail that's going to control here in the fractal noise level strength sliders. At the end of the day, all that you really need to know when you go to designing your terrain is that the higher the step number, the more fine grained detail you're affecting on the landscape. And the lower the number is, the more broad and macro level detail you are adjusting. But if you really want to dive in and understand this even further, I have already covered a video on this that breaks each and every aspect of the level strength sliders in its most minute level of detail. And I've put a link in the description of that video in case you want to head on over there and check it out. And before we switch gears here, we skip this edit offsets earlier. If we check that, we can see that all of our level steps are displayed once again. But in this case, we can decide in the X or the Y direction if we want to shift that detail. So let's take level step three here. If we want to shift it in one direction, we just move this slider to the right and you can see the detail on the terrain is now shifting in one direction. So we can really fine tune detail each one of these aspects by shifting the levels in one direction or another and you get something completely unique. So now that we're back to all of our defaults and our terrain is set at 4K by 4K and a precision level of one meter, we can finally, finally start and design our terrain. So to start that, we're going to basically customize our terrain to be exactly what we want for this project. 
we're going to be working on the bulk or macro detail of the terrain first, and we'll worry about the more fine grain details later on. So to start, we're going to go up here to the custom base shape properties that we skipped earlier on. Let's go ahead and click this checkbox here. And then it's going to bring up a little tab that says edit shape. Well, of course, let's go ahead and edit it. And what pops up is all these little diamond shaped nodes that are displayed on the terrain. If you hover over one, you see it turns red. And if you click and hold on one and drag it, you can affect the terrain manually. And this is affecting one node of adjustment at a time. You can go through and keep raising and lowering these by clicking, holding, and dragging. And you can keep in further fine tuning this exactly how you want on a per node basis. And that's because we have the single node selected. Let's go over here and look at our selection tool. So our selection tool here is highlighted as single, but we can also do it based on a circle selection or a rectangle selection. We also have how we want it to affect the terrain, which is this action selection here. The first one is to move it up and down, which is what we've been doing. Our only way of adjusting is moving it up and down, or we can do it based on an average, but these are gonna need more nodes to select in order to work. So let's go ahead and select our circle adjustment here. And when we did that, you can see that the radius and a fall off slider appear. If we were to hover our cursor back over one of these nodes, well, we don't see any other node being selected other than just one. That's because that each one of these diamonds is affecting the first level step of adjustment, which we remember was every 512 by 512 meters. And that's represented here in our radius. So if we wanted to increase this radius to something like 1500, and then we hovered over the terrain, we can see that within a radius of 1500 meters, we have all of these levels of adjustment that are highlighting on our terrain. Let's go ahead and change the fall off because right now it's really sharp and you can see that when I'm hovering over the terrain, each one of these nodes are the same color, which means it's at the sharpest level of adjustment. If we wanted to say, have a little bit of a faded effect, we can change the fall off value. So if we change this to something around right in the middle here, and hover, you can see that the outer bound nodes are a little bit dimmer. So it's going to affect more of the center point of this circle than it is the outer bounds of this circle. So if we were to increase this up and down, you can see that it's increasing quite nicely up and down on our level of selection. Same sort of adjustment works out for the rectangle, except you get to adjust the width and length as well as each one of those fall offs independently. We're just gonna stick with the circle because it's the easiest level adjustment here for us. And let's go ahead and change how our action is for this. So right now, as we've mentioned, it's just to move up and down. There's also this average, which takes all of the selected nodes and averages them all out together on their adjustment. So if I were to click hold and move my mouse upward, it's going to average out all of these nodes together. And if I go all the way up, it's going to make a flat space. If we were to select the next one, that's flatten. And flatten helps you specify an exact height. And the next action is the flatten action. So if we select this, this action is going to help us pick a spot on the terrain and raise or lower the selected node to the specified height. So here is our flatten height adjustment. So if we wanted the area of selection to be 100 meters above sea level, we're just going to enter 100 here in the flatten height box. Go over to our terrain, click, hold, and drag upward. And now this entire selection here is 100 meters above sea level. If you look here in the top left on our observer tools, the E letter represents the elevation point of the cursor, and you can see it is exactly 100 meters. Let's go ahead and adjust it to something else. Let's change this 100 meters to 500 meters. And then let's lower our radius to just 1,000. So we'll remove the five and add a zero, and now it's just a 1,000 radius. Let's click over here to the right, and then click, drag up, and you can see that now when I'm hovering over this blank area, the elevation is 500 meters above sea level. So that's just a quick way to get the exact height above sea level on those applications that you need to. And the last action that we have here is the noise action. This is gonna give us some random ups and downs whenever we adjust it. So let's go ahead and change our radius to somewhere around 1500. All right, and let's go ahead and just click and drag. 
And what it's doing here is it's taking a different height of value adjustment per one of the nodes that we're selecting. So it's adding some sort of randomness to our terrain selection here. This is a great way to get a good variety in your terrain if you're just trying to do something that has some good adjustments across the board. But in our design, I want to start out with a complete blank canvas. And to do that, you just have to select the flatten entire terrain button here. It's going to ask you, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, of course. And now we've got an entire flattened terrain here. And as you can see, if I keep moving around as we've done before, I can make it whatever I want it. So now that we have our flat terrain, let's go ahead and start shaping it. So I'm going to go and make sure my action is the move up and down and the circle selector tool is just fine with me. And I would actually would want to have more control over this terrain. And by that, what I mean is right now you have a set number of these diamond nodes to adjust. I want more of them. So what we could do is on the first level step slider here in the bottom right, let's just take this all the way down to the left. And you see it has added a plethora of more control here and our circle selection looks a little bit more smooth. So especially when you're doing your own custom terrain, I would almost recommend lowering level step one anyway to get this amount of control because level step one is not going to make a huge difference across the board in your terrain unless you've got a gargantuan size uh, terrain going on. So I'm just going to quickly go through and shape it a little bit to how we kind of want to do it for this tutorial series. And as you can see, I'm just going to keep going around and shaping it to be kind of the shape that we want our terrain to be in. I'm going to select the single selection tool and I want to raise just this guy up a little bit. You can do this to make sure that all of your fine tune adjustments are exactly what you want. There we go. So how this biome is going to work, let me go ahead and select the circle tool. So as I mentioned before, we're actually going to split this up into four biomes. In this region right over here, we're going to do more of a mountainous biome. The hill biome is actually going to be in this area. We're going to do some dunes and deserts in this corner. And right over here is going to be a more of a tropical beach scene. So let's go ahead and make sure that our tropical beach scene is relatively flat right now. It's a little bit bumpy. So remember, we're going to do this flatten and we're going to make sure that it's at sea level. So at this corner, we need it to be sea level. Ah, so see, we've got a lot going on here that isn't sea level. So sea level is going to be exactly where the water is, but part of the sea, we want the terrain to drop down below the sea. So we're going to do that, but we're going to make sure it's just ever so slightly below the terrain. And we'll adjust this in more fine details later on. All right, so our water is going to appear somewhere around right here. And next, I want to make sure that the dunes area is a little bit more averaged out because we're going to add some randomness to this in just a little bit. So remember, we're going to select the average tool here and we're going to pull up and make sure all of these values are a little bit averaged. Perfect. We don't have to do it too much because I'm going to add some noise to it now. And the more back and forth you go, the better because it adds more random detail. All right, same thing with the hills. We're going to just kind of average some of these out to smooth them along. But not too much because I want to go ahead and raise the mountains in the areas that are going to be really prominent. I selected 25, but it's going to have some impact around the edge. I want this area to be more of my mountain range. So I want one ridge line coming down here. The main ridge line needs to come across here. So we need to select all of these 
and make sure it's a smooth transition. Alright, so we have a really good generalized shape here. We've got a mountain ridge line here, a small break off here, and another small break off here. We're going to make sure this is nice and tropically. Oh, let's actually just increase this side a tab. There we go. So what we've done here is we've basically done the macro detail. And later on, once we start dealing with the filters, we're going to start working with the micro detail. So when you're editing the base shape like this, I wouldn't focus too much on trying to get it precisely the way you want it because once you start adding filters, it's actually going to change the terrain quite drastically. And you can also always come back to this type of adjustment after filters are already added, and then you can raise and lower and adjust it however you want then to get the final look that you're after. So once we're satisfied with the generalized shape of our terrain, all we have to do is just select done editing shape. And there you have it. Now that we have the bulk of the shape of our terrain, it's time to add our effects and design generators to our terrain in the next episode. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.